Today's topic is hacking the security stack. What is broken today about our current architecture? We've kind of reactively added tech after tech after tech. In the end, like, you know, complexity is the enemy of security. Uh, and it just, it just can't scale. You know, attackers continue to change and enhance their tactics. And, and so we continue to add new capabilities over time. Look, I was a security architect. Gary was a security architect. I'm not sure we ever actually architected anything. Architecture to me is that kind of looking, it's enterprise architecture. It started from scratch. It's looking at the foundation of what we're building and where we're going. So that's kind of hard to do when you're being reactive. And I think it comes down to a change in paradigm in how you have to look at the security space overall and what we're facing as a, as an industry and how you manage these things. And so, you know, I think we've spent too much time reacting to threats and risks. You need to make sure when you do strategic planning that we can be more proactive and be prepared to meet those needs rather than always chasing after it and trying to catch up. I work in Pennsylvania. I want to submit my bad idea. Let's open up everything. Let's get hacked and use that as the impetus to rebuild from scratch. You, you would save a lot of money, right? There's no, like your whole, you don't need pen testing anymore. Like, just right, throw it out, right? like that's free <laughs> pen testing for, for life. I think there is something to be said there. I think in terms of the, the radical idea posed, you know, it will definitely get action and that's the positive. It would get, you know, funding, resourcing and priority around it. But there you go. <laughs> you, you do want to be the second person brought in to clean it up because the first one who does it is going to be gone. Sometimes we may have biases or blind spots on how good certain areas of our program are. And if you built this kind of sensing AI machine that would tell you where things are working and where things aren't working, then you would be able to really focus your efforts where the most value is. When, when we sure. do event management, we want to make sure that we're actually looking for specific things because too often when we turn on any kind of event management tool, whether it's on the security side or operational side, we open up the floodgates and say, hey, let's see what we want. And then nobody listens to it because it just becomes noise. If you look at all the different controls, all the different things around IT, everything is constantly evolving. The only thing that stays consistent throughout all of this is data and the people that create it. So you have to drive the security into the data itself and make the data self-aware, self-protecting and self-intelligent. I've had conversations with people that were, were not uh, security colleagues and they'll just say something and it will trigger a new thought in my head that opened up a whole new line of thinking for me. Sometimes it helps to get a different perspective on things that forces us to take the blinders off a bit and think differently. You do know that there are companies that are very good at marketing themselves with not having a good product. I mean, there's a lot of really good companies that have great products that don't have good marketing and they're not as successful as the ones that have good, that have good marketing, right? A lot of times it's good product, then great marketing, and then the products start to lag. That happens every day as well. And in the end, the community, right? The buyer community is the ones that has to dig deep and has to kind of hold everybody accountable by talking with each other. What yeah. you find is you give away effectiveness in some of the product lines because nobody has a best of breed product in all areas. One good idea I actually heard was about a pen tester who literally would take a C-suite person and have them physically hack into their own system. Showing them all their passwords that are out there for every website they ever yeah. go to. Show them how many instances it is on the, on the dark web. You make things personal to them, it, it all of a sudden becomes real. You know, still a large percentage of the security population has more of an infrastructure background and, you know, networks and servers and other things. And in the future, you know, we need to have another skill set and a way of thinking and the talent that we hire that can build these programs for the future. At the same time, we need people to not be so specialized and be technologists. So I think there's a psychological, a psychology aspect of how you help and send people for the right behaviors. But I think it's also important that they feel that it's okay to come to you and tell you that they've seen something in the environment because having, you know, 20,000 or a hundred thousand sets of eyes around the world can be powerful for your program. I'll quote my co-host, Mike Johnson, who says, when everyone says, you know, the, the weakest link is people, he takes the complete flip side. He goes, no, your strongest link is yep. your people. Thank you for participating. This has been fantastic. Thank you, everybody.